Okay, good morning. We are now recording, so any gossip that's going on in the room will be saved for posterity. Um, continuing on to the, um, from where we were yesterday. So the topic of the day is X and Y intersects. So let's start by discussing these graphically. We have the Cartesian plane, and we've got an x-axis and a y-axis. And we have a curve on the Cartesian plane. We've created a graph, and we've got an event. Well, the so-called x and y intercepts are very literally named. You see there's a point here where the curve intercepts the y-axis. And spelling. The point where the curve intercepts the y-axis is called the y-intercept. And there's not a race, but there's a point. In fact, in this picture, there are two points where the curve intercepts the x-axis. And those are the x-intercepts. And it's these intercepts that we want to talk about today. How to find them, but maybe more to the point why you would want to find them. Um, let me start by making an observation that it's perfectly possible that a curve does not have x-intercepts or y-intercepts. So, for example, if you graph y equals 1 divided by x, <coughs> we get graphs that look a graph that looks like this, where the curve sort of gets close to the y-axis, but doesn't actually touch the y-axis. So this has no y-intercept. That curve actually is doing that. And it's easy to come up with an example with no x-intercept to y equals x squared plus 1. It looks like that. So where does this curve touch the x-axis? Well, it never does. There are no x intercepts. So we'll just take these intercepts one by one. As far as x intercepts, maybe there's more than one of them. I'll put an s in parentheses. Actually, I'm sorry, I must be tired. We'll start with y intercepts because they're easier. To find. 
the uh, y intercept we set x equal to zero. And then we solve whatever equation that gives us. Um, but the reason I said that y-intercepts were easier is that 99 times out of 100, I mean, maybe more than that in this class, we're going to look at equations where we've got y on one side of the equality and then our x's on the other side. y equals something. And if I now say find the y-intercept of this thing, well, when I let x be zero, y equals zero squared plus zero minus one is negative one. So you can just read the y-intercept right off. And in fact, that's, I keep meaning to modify the class work, I never do. Uh, we can look at, you know, more complicated equations with um, x and y mixed together. If we wanted to find the y-intercept, we do the same thing. We set x equal to zero. Having x and y mixed together does kind of complicate things. Now we have zero times y plus y plus three equals one. At least in this situation, it doesn't complicate things fatally. Zero times y is zero. So we get y plus three equals one. And if we subtract three from both sides, we get y equals negative two. So there are a few problems on the classwork like this, but once we get out of the intercept section, we're almost always going to be looking at this more simple case where y is by itself on one side of the equation. So I think, think in math classes that question is always kind of bubbling under the surface. We can learn a definition or we can learn how to do something, but in general I think people want to know why we're learning something or doing something. And the y-intercepts have fairly concrete real-world meanings most of the time. In word problems, or let me say applied situations, The y-intercept usually has some concrete meaning. 
And in particular, the y-intercept is usually some form of starting value. So let's give an example, and let's, in particular, let's drill down on this word starting. So, I arrive in Shadrin and unfortunately have forgotten to get a ride. So, I'll have to walk home from <coughs> the airport. Let's let x be the number of hours I've spent walking, and y be how far I am from my home. And a fairly realistic equation, we'll talk more about where this equation comes from uh, next week. But for now, a fairly realistic equation for this situation is y equals 5 minus 3.1 times x. So let's, let's find, but let's also interpret the y-intercept. And finding it uh, is a brief exercise because this is one of these nice equations where y is by itself on the left and the x's are all on the right. What is the y-intercept? Someone tell me. Five. I've heard five, and five is correct. Thank you. <coughs> so we've got y equals five minus 3.1x to find the y intercept. We set x equal to zero, y equals five minus 3.1x, but x we've set equal to zero, five minus zero is five. So there's your y intercept. And now let's try to interpret this, and let's try to bring this back to my claim that these intercepts usually represent starting values. So x is the time I've spent walking. And y is my distance from home. So if I've spent zero hours walking from the airport, where am I? The airport. So 
when I am at the airport, I am five miles from home. A, uh, a less contorted way of saying that would be <clears throat> that the airport is five miles. So I'm at the airport, I've got this walk ahead of me, and at the start of the walk, I am five miles from home. So as I suggested it should, this um, intercept is a starting value. How far away I start from my apartment. Any questions about Y intercepts? Okay, so X intercepts can be, or let's say, are trickier. And it may seem odd that I say X intercepts are trickier. Because when I start writing on the board, I mean, they sound like a mirror image of the y-intercepts. To find the x-intercepts, we set y equal to zero instead of x. <laughs> um, the reason I say it's trickier is that, um, I mean, in general, we have y by itself on the left. Um, example, did I, what did I use as my first example? x squared plus x minus 1. Let's go with that. So, according to what I have written down, if we want to find any x-intercepts, we set y equal to zero. But now we have an equation that needs to be solved. If you compare this to the y-intercept, I mean, there wasn't really an equation. You plug in zero, you add zero plus zero minus one, you get the answer. Here, if you want the x-intercepts, you have to solve 0 equals x squared plus x minus 1. And unless you happen to have memorized the quadratic formula at some point and still have that ticking in your brain, we don't know how to solve this. So at the moment, we, we just can sort of shrug and say, well, this is the equation we have to solve, but we don't yet know how to find the equation. And you know how, how bad this is, is going to vary from situation to situation. You know, going back to this example, I wish erasing was faster.
But if we want to find the x-intercept for this airport example, it's y being set equal to zero. And we'll briefly review this next week. But you really should be able to solve a linear equation like this if you're in college algebra. We can add 3.1x to both sides. We get 3.1x equals 5. Then we can divide both sides by 3.1. 5 divided by 3.1 is about 1.6. So, in this example, we were able to find the y-intercept using sort of pre-algebra <coughs> techniques. In this example, we can't find the y-intercept without knowing the right formula. In both cases, the methods are the same. In both cases, we're setting um, x, no, y equal to zero. And I might have misspoke and said y-intercept. Sorry about that. X-intercepts. Um, just as with y-intercepts, x-intercepts tend to have some kind of real-world meaning. We're not doing this for the heck of it. Um, what that real world meaning is, is also a little trickier. I feel like it varies more from problem to problem. But let's go back to the airport. Uh, clear that away. So let's just write down when y equals zero, x equals one point six. And let me let me include, can't talk this morning, let me include our units. X is a time, time is measured in hours. Y is a distance. Distance is measured in miles. So when I'm zero miles from my home, where am I? Home. So when I am home, X is the number of hours I spent walking. So we could beat that sentence into something a little more uh, nice sounding. It took me 1.6 mile, 1.6 hours to get home from the airport. 
So again, this intercept has a very concrete, a very real world meaning. But unlike the Y intercept, which is basically always some kind of initial value, the X intercept varies a lot in terms of how it should be interpreted. So let me not put an equation on the board, but let me put a graph. X, the number of units a new company sells. And Y can be the profit of the company. Uh, going back to what I was saying yesterday about real world considerations. Um, first of all, I'm just, I mean, usually we have a formula relating X and Y. And you sort of realize in the back of your head, well, X has to be a whole number. Right, you can't have, you can't sell 0.17 of a unit, but then you just kind of shrug and draw the curve anyway. We normally don't worry about only drawing dots in this situation. Um, we cannot sell a negative number of units, but we can have a negative profit. The negative profit means we're losing money. So maybe we have a curve that looks something like this. And our x intercept our y-intercept is negative 50,000, and this axis will not be drawn to scale. Let's say that our, um, our x-intercept is 500. So the y-intercept is once again an initial value. Um, at the start of this venture, we are $50,000 in debt due to startup costs. So even though, of course, the situation is totally different from the airport example, still the y-intercept is playing the same role. The y-intercept is an initial value. The x-intercept is what? Someone from the business department tell me this. Or someone not in the business department. Okay, fair enough. Can you ask the question again? How would you interpret that 500? Would that be how much needs sold in order to break even? That's it exactly. Thank you for your answer. This is where we go from being in the red to being in the black. It's the break even point where we're now making a profit. So you see, unlike the y-intercepts, which are the initial values in both cases, the x-intercepts mean totally different things. It just depends on the situation you are looking at. Any questions about either x or y-intercepts? then 
You should have class work done for me, and I have class work to hand out to you.